Hey guys, welcome back. So I thought that for today's video, I would do a little bit of a story time. So as you can see by the title, we are talking all about my first romance that I ever read. And I figured I would not only tell you about it, but then also kind of go into detail about um, the evolution of my kind of romance reading timeline. I, for one, am always very interested to find out how people kind of um, not only got into reading but got into their favorite genre got into certain books found out about certain series so on and so forth and since this is a booktube channel and if you've been around for a while you'll know that i have a affinity towards romance also cozy mysteries and thrillers but for the sake of today's video we're just going to be kind of focusing on romance so if this is something that you're interested in then stay tuned Okay, so uh, let's go back to about 20 years ago. I want to say it was 1999 or 2000 to be exact. Um, young me was a teen, fresh newbie teen. I think I was actually 13 <laughs> and I was visiting my abuelita in um, California. Uh, that's originally where I'm from. Just quick backstory <laughs> currently living in Georgia but I would go visit her every summer in California and one of the things that we used to do together all the time is go yard sailing aka going to a bunch of yard sales um, over the weekend seeing what kind of deals we can find etc etc now naturally since I have always been a reader anytime I came across books I would stop pick them up kind of flip through them and depending on what they were about um buy them but up until that point i had been reading mostly um i guess middle grade no not even just middle grade i actually had some weird tastes because i remember um one of summer back then i was actually reading dean coots but regardless <laughs> i wasn't reading romance so we're at a yard sale one day and i come across a box of um romance paperbacks like trade paperbacks the kind of cheapy ones and even cheaper than usual because since it's a yard sale they kind of mark everything down and so i believe that the lady was selling um books like four for a dollar or something like incredibly cheap like that so um first things first i came across the covers that was the thing that stood out to me the most because um if you've been reading kind of romance for a while or you've been following the evolution of how the covers used to be back then they used to be kind of like these brightly colored cute graphic styles um coincidentally similar to what they're doing today so i guess the trend has made its way back around but I digress I was immediately attracted to those covers I picked one up I kind of like read the back of it and I don't know it's it, something just compelled me to scoop them up so um, I don't remember the entire bunch that I bought but I will say the first one that was included in that lot and the first romance that I ever read was Rachel Gibson's truly madly yours even to this day it's been 20 years. I've read countless books, romance and non-romance. I can still remember this book like it was yesterday. I read it. I absolutely loved it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a copy with me. And the reason be behind that is the version that I read way long ago, <laughs> I accidentally or maybe purposefully got rid of when I was trying to purge books. And then um, when I wanted to get the edition that I wanted again, I, for some reason, I just couldn't find it. They have printed it it's got a new cover and I just don't want the new cover I want the old nostalgic original cover so side note I might have to go to eBay to find that but anyway yeah so that was the first romance that I ever read and if I am not mistaken um the premise behind it is that a woman returns back to her hometown to um be present for the reading of her stepfather's will i think he leaves her something either property or money and she has to kind of stick around in town in order to claim it and while she is in town she kind of bumps into her um old love who you know of course did her wrong back in the day and she's trying to stay away from him blah 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 and the two of them end up getting back together but anyway i it wasn't even what it was about it was just what i felt reading it which was um so swept away and captivated in the story and 
immediately after that, I tried to get my hands on as many Rachel Gibson's more specifically and as many romances as possible. But as you guys know, if you read romance or I guess any genre, um, there's just such a wide variety of plots and tropes within genres. And at the time, what I wanted or what I was familiar with were kind of those lighthearted, fluffy or contemporary romances, I guess I'd say if you wanted to categorize it. And so that kind of led me to other um, romance authors at the time that were very similar to Rachel Gibson. So we've got Carly Phillips. She was huge and I adored her books as well. Then we've got the um, infamous Susan Elizabeth Phillips. Now, side note, I mean, SEP is just like it when it comes to contemporary romance. And if you like um, sports romances in particular, I know she's got like a Chicago Bear series, which is about um, football players. I believe she's got a couple of other series, but I actually read one of her books, I wanna say not too long ago, still holds up. I mean, the writing is top notch, which is something that's really comforting for me to see because I know that people oftentimes put down the romance genre, but these stories really withstand the test of time. You know, I know, especially nowadays, those kind of um, corny, um, over-the-top romance covers are all the rage, and sometimes the stories don't really hold up, but a lot of the times they, they actually do, especially when it comes to contemporary romance, because even 20 years ago, the problems that our main heroine was dealing with are the same problems that our heroines are dealing with today, just, you know, throw in an iPhone and social media. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just, I have my phone here and let's just say, thank goodness I've had my Goodreads account for a while because I remember when I first set it up, I actually went through and added books that I read it, read like way before. So let me just kind of read off a couple so you guys know what I was reading and loving. So, um, Simply Irresistible by Rachel Gibson, that actually came out in 98, um, Coincidentally, it's about a hockey team and y'all know I love me some hockey romances and I guess it kind of goes all the way back to when I first started reading romance, which is hilarious for me to stumble across. Um, then we have, um, let's see, um, more Rachel Gibson. Okay, I mentioned Susan Mallory. No, I didn't mention Susan Mallory. I mentioned Carly Phillips, but Susan Mallory is also in that list. So it was like four main authors whose books I absolutely gobbled up and I loved. So um, Irresistible, which is part of Susan Mallory's Buchanan's Family series, was also one that I read and I loved. Talking about Carly Phillips, I read The Bachelor and The Playboy, which is actually books one and two from her Chandler Brothers series. Um, it's, I believe, a trilogy, but again, it follows these brothers, the Chandler brothers, and um, each of them finding love. And what I love about all of these authors that I've mentioned so far is the, the writing, it's just, it's so snappy, it's so witty. I love that the heroines, even back then, were very independent and fierce, and they didn't just easily give in and made the men chase them and work for their love, which, again, is a trope I can get behind. Um, I'm trying to look, I, I've got so many, um, Carly Phillips, Susan Elizabeth Phillips, um, Natural Born Charmers, which is number seven in Susan Elizabeth Phillips' Chicago Star series is one that I gave five stars to. Um, that was actually the first of hers that I read. And if you're familiar with romance, you'll know that when it comes to series, um, most of the time it's just more like shared world. So you can kind of read books out of order because really each book is just about a specific couple. But oh my gosh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm reading through all of these and it's bringing back so many memories. I'm pretty sure I read basically everything in Rachel Gibson's um, backlog that she had written, I guess, as soon as I discovered the romance genre. I believe she actually have has come out with more books semi recently that I haven't really um, gotten a chance to read yet because my reading tastes, I don't want to say have changed, but I'm more so exploring other authors. So let's just quickly talk about, I guess, my evolution of romance. So as you know, I started off with contemporary romance um, and these books in terms of like heat level can go anywhere from say like a two, we're gonna go on a scale of five. So anywhere from like a two 
to a four. They've never like hit five, but you know, as I kind of progressed, I started reading books with more and more steam level. I've obviously read erotica books. I know Ronnie Lauren is one that I read long time ago whose books are very steamy. I'm trying to go through my Goodreads and give you guys more specific um, books, but unfortunately they're like showing them out of order, which is not fun. But um, yeah, basically I say that to say the older I got, the more that the steam level kind of increased and that wasn't necessarily done intentionally. It was just that my eyes were open to more books within the genre and I found that I wanted to explore um, other tropes. So I know for a while, and this was before Fifty Shades of Grey, there was a lot of books that were really hot around like BDSM and stuff like that. Those obviously have like a five steam level and I read those for a while um let's see and then i actually came across jill shalvis which again one of my all-time favorite romance authors and i would actually say she's very similar to um rachel gibson in terms of the contemporary romance that she writes however i find that jill shalvis um injects just a little bit more humor which i absolutely love i find her heroines very relatable just in terms of like their um quirkiness or their flawed personality and them just overall wanting to be loved, looking for love, what have you. So as far as the romance that I'm reading today, I would actually say the main difference is that I've actually started reading a lot more um, indie or non-traditionally published romance authors and we can thank a couple of uh, people or reasons behind that. One, um, you know, the advent of like Amazon and being able to self-publish, I'm able to go on there and browse for books and um, pick up books that people personally publish as opposed to going through a traditional publisher, which again, I like. I know that there are a lot of hits and a lot of misses, <laughs> but that's where the rating system comes in. I know I don't typically read uh, ratings or uh, reviews of books, but I will look at a rating just to see if like the grammar and everything is properly um, fleshed out. And another reason why I have delved more into indie books is thanks to BookTube, Bookstagram, the entire book community on social media in general, uh, because a lot of my friends or people that I follow on there who I trust will oftentimes talk about books that I have never heard of. And that's just a great way for me to have my books, you know, um, uh, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> have books vetted so that I know that they are going to be worth my time. And so I'm so glad that I have um, been able to discover um, just the wide variety of romance because again, I really feel like there's something for everyone, even for those who don't read romance. Um, because when you think about it, even traditionally, you know, bookshelf is fiction or bookshelf is sci-fi or thriller, whatever, a lot of times there are sometimes romance elements in them. And so really, you know, I guess it just depends on how much romance you want in your story. I personally want a lot of romance in my stories. And so it's for that reason that I am absolutely proud to be a romance reader. So anyway, <laughs> I guess that will kind of do it for my story time. Um, let me know if you like this video and let me know in the comments like what your gateway book was to your favorite genre. It doesn't even have to necessarily be romance, but you know, your first sci-fi that you ever read, if that's your favorite, your first cozy mystery that kind of got you um, hooked on the genre. I'm really curious because I find that a lot of times people will surprise themselves and remember. I know for one, I've read so many books that I couldn't even remember the plot to what I read last month but for some reason I remember the very first romance book that I ever read so anyway <laughs> I hope you like this video and if you did please like and subscribe and in the meantime um, I'll talk to you guys later happy reading bye